Okay, well, shall we start? Sure, okay. Well, we just saw your TEDx talk um, and I was quite struck by this idea of loving kindness that you talked about and how you're trying to kind of turn anger or the kind of stinking feeling into these creative counter strategies. While I suppose that's very important for one's personal well-being, I wonder if you can talk a little bit more about whether anger is sometimes uh, you know, important, but we need to insist on anger in some cases. Sure. Um, I mean, of course, anger can become a part of thinking and thinking. And um, I think the reason why I talk about thinking and thinking is because, you know, we really think about it. Thinking thinking is the cause of sexual abuse, the cause of domestic violence, the cause of murder. Um, you know, at the cause of anger. And what I want to say about anger is, is that um, anger is energy, and and that's okay. I mean, all of us uh, will experience energy of anger in our body. You know, when we're angry, we, it's, it's very visceral, and we feel it in the body. The problem is, is what we do with the anger. You know, the energy is trying to latch itself onto something. The energy of anger perhaps latches it onto something external and mm. um, so that can be people or it, it can be buildings objects or sometimes it latches onto the internal and latches onto us and that's when it becomes toxic and it becomes stinking thinking and but initially yeah. uh, anger is energy mm. and it was interesting that your tedx talk was seen by some people as you were saying as kind of quite angry whereas for me it wasn't really I think it was your friend who, who or, or, or some other people who actually made a comment about the talk. Yes. Um, initially, well, when I was invited to give the, the talk, uh, once you've been invited, you're asked to, to audition. And it was very interesting. Unfortunately, I had a, one of my really good friends with me, so another black woman. And, you know, when it was that it was quite angst, my friend, you know, do you think it was anxious? Absolutely no way we watched it, but I think, you know, it's because it was presented to all white people. Mm. And, uh, you know, in a way what actually happened was is they went on to the defensive and they went into their own stinking this <laughs> that's my thing. Interesting. We, we talked about some of those things today at the conference. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you is if you, if you can tell us a little bit more about your new novel. You're currently looking for a publisher for your new novel. Could you tell us a little bit more about what the novel is about? Sure. Um, the, the novel is a family saga and it takes us to Sierra Leone, where I originate from. and back to England. The story is about a child who, who was born um, in the 70s and she's born to a high society white woman and an African, a traditional African man, an African man who has come to England to study. But he comes from a very traditional background and basically in his tradition he shouldn't be seen to be sleeping with white women. And actually it was, he, as a student, he was living a, a very quiet life, but his white friends wanted to get him out and they got him drunk on palm wine. And he has this one night stand and this child is born. And the high society white woman can't have this child because she'll lose her inheritance. Mm. And when he finds out, he flees back to Africa. And so the story really is, is about this child discovering her lineage and looking at what actually happens to the parents and the consequences of their actions. The child is adopted but never told that she has a black father. Mm. So there's this whole journey as she gets older realizing that actually she, you know, she's black, uh, she has a black father, and actually finds out that the parents she thinks who are her parents aren't her parents. They, you know, she was actually adopted. And so it takes us back to, to the rebel war in, right. in Sierra Leone, and about diamonds, and about blood diamonds, and about the, the traditions of the land, and the stories narrated through, through a plant. Hmm. 
Interesting. So kind of a reclaiming of diasporic connections. Uh, I would like to open it to the floor. Uh, I'm probably going to repeat the question back to you. I think this would be the easiest way to do it. Uh, so if anyone in the audience, I'm really sorry you can't see them. I don't want to turn the, the computer uh, to them, but there's around, I don't know, 40 people in the audience or even more, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, Yes, women and one man. <laughs> Two actually, sorry. Uh, so if anyone's got a question for Valerie, yes, Pillar. Yes, um, I wonder if you could ask Valerie to... Uh, can you actually tell hear her? No, no you no can't. Way. No, okay. Uh, just ask her if she can tell us something about the work she's been carrying out in Canada with other black Canadian writers. It would be interesting to, to hear about connections between mm. the situation in, in the UK and Canada, if she can say something about that. Right, okay, so Pillar would like to know if you could tell us a little bit more about your work with uh, African-Canadian writers and if you can tell us a little bit more about those connections. Sure, um, I was very fortunate to co-edit the first national anthology on African-Canadian poetry and uh, I mean it was very interesting because when I first went to Canada I I really realized that I needed to know what the history was of black Canadians. And I, uh, poetry is very big in Canada, especially slam poetry. And so that put me right back into the heart of, of the poetic world. And I was actually asked if I would um, direct one of the slam teams, which actually my team did it, actually win the uh, national um, slam poetry competitions. But because of this, it made me think about, oh, you know, what poetry books are out there? And I remember asking uh, this, this white guy who is very much, um, you know, involved with, with the black community, you know, are there any uh, national anthologies? And he said no, and I thought, oh, he's a white guy, what does he know? And so I went Googling and I couldn't find anything. And then the, the one thing, there was a book by Harold he Harold Head called Canada in Us Now, mm -hmm. which was basically Toronto based. So I set about basically um, putting this anthology together and, and I invited another poet to write with me and to edit with me. 